Hi everyone, Kim here again today with a new process video using the January 2018 Hip Kits. It is going to be a gorgeous mixed media page this time using the Distress Oxide inks from Ranger. This will be the very first time that I'm using these inks to paint and you will be absolutely blown away by the effects. There is something so amazing about these inks in that they obviously the oxide in the, the, the pigment reacts very differently to water. So when you add water after you have heat set it, it reactivates that ink and pigment, um, which then allows you to dab it away, giving you a really realistic watercolor effect. I love the fact that you can layer these colors over each other, layer upon layer, creating a sort of dark and light effect. And especially if you use wet medium on a wet on a wet image, then you get this really beautiful, proper wet on wet watercolor vibe, which is exactly what I was looking for. And of course, these these um, adjustable Vicky Burton stickers that came in the uh, Hip Kit Club main kit for January are the perfect, perfect medium to use this technique on because not only is the, the cardstock that they're printed on a really good quality, but they're nice and porous, so you can use a lot of water and I'm not exactly sure how they prepare these sticker bases, but or these, these, the, the sticker medium that they're using, but it reacts really, really well with wet medium. It doesn't warp, it doesn't distort, so I was really pleased with the effect. What I'm doing here is I'm just creating a bunch of extra embellishments to add to my page. The thought is that I'm going to add a combination of both the printed die cut ephemera flowers which I designed for the Hip Kit Club January kit as well as these hand painted Vicky Burton stickers so yeah you will see in a moment how well they coordinate together. What I'm doing here is just adding obviously an extra extra water whether it's daubs or spray and then you mop it on afterwards and again it leaves it it re reactivates the ink where the water falls so one is able to dab it away giving that gorgeous variegated effect of both just ordinary watercolors together with that oxide ink. I, I needed a variety of shades and I didn't really have, or well, I don't have, my limit, my, my collection of uh, Distress Oxide inks are quite limited at this stage. So I mixed the two and they blended perfectly together. One could not tell that I was using two different paint types. I've obviously sped the process up here a lot because I didn't want to bore you to tears with the whole incredible process. Okay, so here I've got that Distress Ox Oxide Pink, the Pickled Raspberry. I'm going straight onto my background paper, which incidentally is an exclusive paper I designed for the January Kids for Hip Kid Club as well. And then using a blending tool, um, part of the Artistry collection from K-Craft. It is a local brand, but I do know that people like Tim Holtz and there are other companies obviously doing them. These felt foam pads are absolutely perfect for blending this, this distress, distress Oxide ink. Because those pads are saturated with ink, you have to push quite hard to get the ink onto the little felt pad. And then so that I don't get um, a concentration of ink around the edge of the felt pad, I actually dab it onto the piece of packaging first before blending it. Oh golly, please ignore my dog which is barking frantically at the postman outside. They have this love-hate relationship where they absolutely loathe each other, so yeah, excuse that. <laughs> The great thing about the activated ink on the packaging is that it also activates the ink that I have blended onto the background page. Here I'm just spritzing some water. Again, what it does is it, it just it loosens certain areas wherever the water has fallen and then once dabbed away with, a, um, with an absorbent towel, 
it leaves areas which are lighter it just gives this gorgeous variegated color effect which is so unique to the, the distress oxide inks I'm going to add a little bit of splatter now just for some some slightly darker pink and I chose the vibes sweetheart from shimmers paints and then the second color is colorings dark stilettos also from shimmers paints First I matted my photo onto a piece of tissue paper which is folded in half and merely torn. Now what I'm doing is just puzzling or solving the puzzle of where the flowers are, look best and where best to, to place them. I don't know if you like me and you love to, to, your page is a work in process. So if you have stickers, I don't know, I, I personally like to place them down and if need be move them around. Now the problem with that obviously is your stickers are really sticky. So if they stick to your background page, the chances are that they're going to remove paper or damage that background page once you pull them off again. So I've solved this problem. What I'm doing is, is here, it's an example. I remove that top sheet from the sticker sheet leaving merely just that non-stick background page. I then pop that sticker straight onto that background stage and then loosely just trim around it with the scissors. Now that sticker is movable because it is on its background page, or on its little background um, sheet. So yeah, just a, a helpful tip. I've damaged far too many pages in my lifetime of scrapbooking and this has really um, has become an absolute vital part of my process. I'm just going to carry on placing those flowers. I'm trying to stick to that um, heart shape, heart shape that I've inked onto the background, and I don't want to lose too much of that ink. I need it to still be peeking out from underneath the flowers. So the way I position the flowers um, will have to be in such a way that it doesn't obscure the inking. close-up of one of the clusters where you can still clearly see the ink peeking out from the flowers. These are the American Craft stickers that came in the January Hip Kit Club kits. I'm using the My Heart as my title. I like the fact that it's on a dark round foam so they're nice and punchy on the black and white stripe. Positioning the glitter hearts around the page not only completes my glitter triangle, my, my three-point glitter triangle, but it adds some really understated bling to the, the clusters. Those were some more stickers found on that Vicky Bowden uh, sticker sticker pad. Actually, that pad is super generous. There was 170 pieces that come in that um, in that sticker pack, which actually is really really good value for money. I'm using some of the raw un. Um, unpainted stickers now just leaving them plain black and white which I'm using as little sentiment stickers in the form of anchors around the, the page. Two strips of pattern paper create a border along this left side. I then go afterwards and 
and uh, machine stitched with some nice plain machines. Machine stitching using a nice heavy needle so it gets some accented holes which are great for texture. Again, I'm using that Distress Oxide, it's perfect for stamping. I've just got an ordinary uh, date stamp which I've stamped in two places on the actual page. Now the trick is, is to go back now that everything's adhered and to make it really nice and dimensional I bend all the edges of the leaves and the edges of the flowers upward so that it gives it lovely texture and height. It just makes for a much better photograph. Friends, I've really enjoyed sharing this process video with you. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Please be sure to watch my channel for new process videos and be sure to stop by hipkitclub.net and grab a kit for yourself. Thanks then. Bye-bye.